and thank you for joining us again in these unusual days. Unusual, but yet we can still have good days. I hope you had a good day today uh, at the McMorris House up in beautiful Curran. Uh, we had a good day. I spent some time out in the yard raking leaves and pine needles, and I have more than my share. If anybody would like some, feel free to come and help yourself. Uh, Sharon spent a good portion of the day. Uh, she's done everything in the house for spring cleaning, I think, that she knows to do, so she moved out into the garage. And uh, she's got a lot of her stuff out there that she was going through today. And we took our daily power walk. Uh, if you were driving along McCullum Lake Road, you'd have seen Sharon and Aaron and I, and you'd have seen me pulling up the rear. Uh, I can't keep up with Sharon and Aaron. It's, it's unbelievable. And I try, and I mean, we're doing a brisk walk, but I cannot, I, I cannot keep up with them. And when we pass neighbors, if they're out in the yard, they like to make comments about how far behind I'm, I'm lagging, so they remind me of. But anyway, we did have a good day today. I hope you had a good day today. Uh, let's, let's start off with good news. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I can't remember the young man's name. His name is Chad. I mean, I can't remember his last name. Beverly Friend knows him. Uh, we've mentioned him several Wednesday nights. Uh, he was on a ventilator downstate. Uh, good news, he's gone home and has improved dramatically enough to be able to go home. Uh, got a phone call from Jim Houghton today. Uh, Sandy, you know, she's been undergoing these treatments and she had a PET scan uh, done, got the results today and things are looking uh, much better for her. And I was very pleased to hear that from Jim. They were very encouraged with the results. Uh, still has a ways to go, but she's, you know, all the indicators are positive. And you know, we got good indicators from, uh, from Keith Richards and his treatment. So we were happy about that. Uh, Amber told me, you know, her sister has been tested for the virus. Uh, haven't gotten the results in yet, but nonetheless, uh, she is showing improvement, and we are very happy about uh, that. So that's, 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 that's good news, and I am so thankful for, for the good news. Um, Brother Jamie has a couple things to share with you, something about uh, YouTube, but also, Jamie, if you could mention the grin and groan, and if you could also <coughs> mention the, uh, the, the concert uh, and, and the music of last Sunday evening, and that was a great success. So he'll, he'll mention those things, so I'll bow out of the way, and here's Mr. Jamie. Yes, I do want to remind you that uh, coming up tomorrow night will be our seventh episode of Grin or Groan. And then, uh, of course, uh, that's at 7 o'clock p.m. on Facebook Live. Uh, same, uh, same channel there with uh, Mile Baptist Church. And uh, keep in mind, I know some people have asked, what you're on right now is our public page. Uh, we do have a, f a family page, many of you are familiar with. We use that for prayer requests, praises. This has come up in some discussion in the last few days. I just want to make sure you understand that. Many of you, I think, know that, uh, but it's a public page. Um, and so uh, um, coming up on Sunday, we will have our normal uh, 11 o'clock worship service. We're going to do another hymnspiration Sunday evening. That was received very nicely. It's a blessing to my heart as I'm listening to, my, listening to the hymns play, seeing the responses from you all. I'm glad it's an encouragement to you. That's what we desire to do, is be an encouragement. And those hymns can be a real blessing to uh, increasing our faith and just reminding us of the goodness of God. And so, uh, yeah, please turn in for hymnspiration hymn again Sunday evening. Other thing I want to mention to you is that, uh, as pastors mentioned to you before, um, go ahead and share these videos. Uh, those of you who are savvy with Facebook, you know how to take and go back into this video after we've done it live. It's there recorded on the, on the public page. Share the video and share it with people. It's got the gospel presentation. I'm hearing great things that I haven't even had a chance to share with Pastor yet of just how people are being touched by our messages, how it's reaching to people through share with this person, that person shares with this person, and it's amazing how God is using um, uh, what we're doing and reaching people with the gospel and reaching people with the truth of who God is. And so you can do that with Facebook, but I know some of you uh, still know of people who just are uncomfortable with Facebook. Well, that's why I wanna keep you in mind, we do have the services still, audio, on podcast. We're doing our best to keep those up there. You can go through various podcasting apps to be able to get the audio. Also, we just finally got done with a YouTube channel. 
Now, I will tell you, I've looked up Mayo Baptist Church in YouTube, and it's hard to find. But if you put punch in Mayo Baptist Church channel, it will get you to there. You click on it, you go into it. Um, and like Facebook, um, it's public. You can go look at the services in our channel. Right now, there's one service in there this past Sunday. We'll keep putting them up into there for those who just want to go to you go to YouTube and look at the channel. But like Facebook, if you're wanting to make comments, you've got to have an account. And you say, I don't have an account for YouTube either. You may be surprised that you do have an account. Because if you've ever used Gmail, if you said, yeah, I got a Gmail account one time, or you say, I use Google Maps, you have to have a Gmail account. Remember, we're not talking YouTube TV. Yes, you can get a YouTube t TV subscription, and you can get that, and that gives you a bunch of channels. We're not talking about YouTube TV. We're talking about plain old YouTube. Go in there, you just simply have to put in an email address that you wanna go by, um, and you, you choose an email address, and it's gonna be at Gmail, whatever you choose. Many of you have a Gmail account. That's an email address, but it's also your account username. You give a password, boom, that's it. It's easier to get into than Facebook. You don't have to have all this profile stuff. You get into YouTube, you can have an account. If you've got ever used YouTube in some way or another, you can, then you've got a YouTube account. Um, if you've got a Gmail or a Google Maps, as I mentioned, you can go in there, you can make comments if you're logged into your account. So we're hoping this will access more people uh, to be able to put it on Gmail. And as you can see, we're trying to get 100 subscribers so that we can go live with YouTube Put it on our website and make it available to even more people. So keep that in mind. If you have any questions, as has already been happening, feel free to text me, email me, call me. I'd be more than happy how to explain some of that stuff. Hopefully that could bring some clarification to you. But we're trying to reach as many people with the, with the tools that we have. Thank you. I appreciate so much uh, Jamie and Amber. Uh, and all they're doing, they are real troopers, and I am so thankful for them and them being a part of, uh, of our ministry here. Uh, again, I want to encourage you, grin and groan tomorrow night. Yes, it's silliness. It is just silliness. I enjoy reading the comments of people that are watching as much as, as anything. And if you haven't seen it, uh, tomorrow night at 7, then Amber with the piano, the music, Sunday night at 7.30, uh, that went over very well. That was a blessing to so many people. And uh, just grateful to Jamie and Amber and all they are doing. Uh, let me encourage you. Uh, we can't invite people to church, but we can invite people to view the service. And this Sunday is Easter Sunday. Uh, an Easter like no other. Uh, no other in my generation, younger generation or older generation. Uh, but Easter Sunday, it's going to be all the more meaningful, all the more inspirational, all the more encouraging, all the more uplifting. Uh, invite people to tune in and just go to Mayo Baptist Church Facebook and it'll, they'll find it and tune in and uh, be, the, be in your place this, this Sunday morning. And I'm looking forward to, to sharing with you what the Lord lays on my heart. And let me thank you also for giving. Probably been a, never been a greater time in the history of this church or all churches than for God's people to be faithful. And you have been, and I am grateful. Uh, when I looked at the mail today, uh, one of our widow ladies uh, said, my April tithe. And what a blessing. Hmm. What, what a sweet lady. And what, what an encouragement to my heart. And God will bless you for that. You know, we all need to be blessed. God is not going to let us be generous and not reward us for, for doing that. So thank you for your faithfulness and giving. And thank you, Bob Carpenter, for showing up uh, almost every day here at, at the church and taking care of that important work. And I am so thankful to, to Brother Bob and his, his faithfulness uh, in maintaining what we need to be maintained during this time. Also, my thanks to Sandy Handridge for... Uh, availing yourself to people. If you have some kind of unique need and you can't find a way to meet that need, give Sandy a, a, a call. And uh, if she can find a way to, to make it happen, she'll do it. And my thanks to you, Sandy, for uh, doing a great job there. So lots of good things 
it, it, you know, this is bringing out the best in people. And people are realizing that they have, uh, they have a source of strength that maybe they didn't realize how important it was before now. But let me say this too. Tonight's message is not going to be about fear per se. I've, I've preached a lot about fear and anxiety. And I, and I will, again, not necessarily Sunday, Easter Sunday, but the following Wednesday. Those of you that struggle, my heart goes out to you. Don't beat yourself up. And, you know, don't, don't doubt your salvation. If you've trusted Christ as your Savior, you, you can still be fearful. Because my next mm -hmm. message mm -hmm. is going to be about the apostles in the ship on the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus is asleep. And they're fearful. And he acknowledges their fearfulness. In fact, he asks them, why are you so fearful? And then he identifies the reason why. But my point is this. They were apostles. And they were fearful. You know, but they were apostles and they grew. So, you know, don't beat yourself. If you find yourself in a little bit of anxiety every now and then or fear every now and then, don't question your salvation. Don't question your relationship with God. It was, it was normal with the apostles, but it was a process, and it's a process with you and me too. So uh, we'll address that story, uh, not Sunday, but next Wednesday night. Okay, turning our attention to prayer requests. Oh, by the way, next Wednesday... And I appreciate you. Jamie sends out the SK Notify reminding you of the service, reminding you to <clears throat> send in your prayer request to Sharon, and you do. I'm missing the, the praise. So next Wednesday, when we mention prayer requests, we're going to mention in, send in your praises too, because I, I miss those. But anyway, back to the prayer request. <clears throat> Tanya Anderson. First of all, we need to remember her in prayer. You know, she's been dealing with Crohn's. Um, She's a real trooper. We love you, Tanya. Uh, but she's got a new doctor lately, and she's encouraged by this new doctor. So we need to remember her in prayer. But she asked prayer for her friend Nora in the hospital with the virus, critical but stable. That's her friend Nora. And then she asked prayer for her son, Zach, and his wife, Mariah. Most of you know them. Uh, they're frontline workers during this time, and they're, they're separated from their children. Uh, their children, I, I think, are with Mariah's parents right now. Uh, but they're, they're doing what so many good people are doing. I mean, uh, not just the uh, health care workers, but cl store clerks and people keeping businesses open and services available for, the, for those of us that need. My son, Matt, he is continuing to work where, where he works there in Wisconsin. So we're grateful to everybody who's still out there doing, uh, doing a good work and providing the services that we need. Uh, she also asked prayer for her Aunt Artie, who has had some issues but is home doing better. Uh, Cindy Richards, Richards asked prayer for her daughter Amanda Bolin, who is a nurse in, in New York. And that reminds us to pray for Brother Keith as he is undergoing treatment and he got some good results here. Uh, I don't remember if it was the end of last week or the first of this week. I guess it was the end of last week. Uh, then also pray for Peggy Bennett. You know, I'm not the only Louisiana native in this church, in addition now to Aaron and, and Sharon, but uh, Peggy Bennett, born and raised in New Orleans. And they're down, I think they're in Slidell, which is not in New Orleans, but it's north of Lake Pontchartrain, if you know your Louisiana geography. They're down there, been down there for a while visiting family, and they ask prayer for safety. They hope to be home uh, in May. So that's Peggy Bennett. We'll remember her in prayer. Uh, then Bruce Stiles asked prayer for his sister, Pam Heaton, who has surgery on Friday. His mom, Anita, with lung disease awaiting test. Uh, Beverly Friend asked continued prayer for her son in law, Pastor Doug Stockwell. Um, has upcoming back surgery that's still scheduled to happen. Sharon Durfee with nine unspoken requests. Ed Coslow with nine unspoken requests. Uh, I want to remember Amber's sister. Uh, I want to remember Ashley. Uh, what's Ashley's last name now? Tubbs. Tubbs. Tubbs, that's right. So remember Ashley, you know, she's a healthcare worker. Velvet, healthcare worker. Jalen, healthcare worker. I uh, want to remember her. Layla. Uh, Layla grew up in this church. Layla Troyer. She's married now. I think she's Layla Barber. I want to remember her in prayer. Uh, isn't it amazing how many people 
we realize now are involved in healthcare and you know health work, but they're heroes. They they are their heroes, and we will remember them in prayer. And I know you pray for them. I pray for our healthcare workers. The Lord brings them to mind multiple times during the day, and that's that's what you call praying without ceasing. When the Lord brings people to mind, you could be washing dishes and praying for people. You could be mowing the grass, praying for people. And uh, Sharon and I find ourselves doing that all the time. Uh, Sharon Gillis has four unspoken requests. Ask prayer for Dakota. He's in the military, maybe going overseas. Uh, Lisa Wise asked prayer for, uh, I think this is a niece. Sorry if it's not, Lisa. Uh, Carrie, uh, supposed to have a baby soon. And pray for the safety and the health and the well-being of mom and the baby. And then uh, pray for Howard Weidman. He's still in the nursing care facility there in um, Grayling. So uh, lots of folks to pray for. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you that we can come to you in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for saving us. Thank you for being patient with us. Thank you for growing us. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for your word that we find so much comfort in. Thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit, Lord, that is so, so important in these, these days. Thank you for our church family. Thank you for the preaching of the word. Lord, thank you for the beautiful day today. Thank you, Lord, that as far as I know, all of our church family and the family members, their, their families, Lord, are, are, are well. And if, if not well, they're, they're doing okay with the illness that they're dealing with. We thank you for the good report, Lord, from, from Sandy Holton today. Lord, we just have indeed much to be thankful for. Lord, we, though, come to you now on behalf of these numerous prayer requests, Lord, that I have, <coughs> that I have mentioned. Lord, uh, some folks sick, some folks uh, recovering from surgery, some folks going through treatment, Lord. Uh, so many folks not feeling well. Lord, I don't know that I mentioned Yvonne. Uh, Yvonne is still uh, struggling with her uh, pneumonia, Lord. I just pray for her. Lord, she's received new medicine. And Lord, I just pray that she'd start feeling well soon. We love her. We miss her. Lord, I pray for uh, all of the folks, the, uh, the names that I just read. And Lord, for the health care workers that you would... Lord, they are truly on the front line. Everyone out there serving today is on the front line to a degree, but uh, the medical workers are at the tip of the spear. And I pray, Lord, that you would protect them. And Lord, I know that uh, there's healthcare workers in Gaylord and in Northern Michigan, folks close by that have been infected and they're in the hospital, some of them, and some of them, uh, thankfully, don't, they don't need the hospital, but Lord, I pray healing for them. And I pray your, your watch care over the others that continue to serve. Lord, I think about Jalen. I think about Velvet. I think about Ashley in particular. Lord, Layla, Cindy's um, uh, daughter, Lord. And there's, there's many others, Lord, that, uh, and I don't mean to slight anybody, but there's many folks in our church family that have relatives and friends or neighbors and involved in health care. And I pray your protective uh, arm around them. And Lord, we also pray for our president, that you'd give him wisdom. No president in the history of the United States, well, perhaps back in the early 1900s, Lord, but in, certainly in our lifetime, Lord, no president's had to deal with this. And I pray that you'd give him wisdom, great wisdom. Pray that you'd give him strength, Lord. Pray that you'd protect his health. And for the, our vice president, Lord, I pray the same thing. And Lord, I, I think about the the. the doctors, Lord, that we've become familiar with at the daily conferences and other uh, important leaders, Lord, uh, those in charge of uh, the economy and the Secretary of the Treasury, Lord, all these men, they, they are taking on vital, important roles. I pray that you would protect them, that you would give them good health, and Lord, help them all to make wise decisions, decisions that will uh, benefit, Lord, the, the, the regular folks in this, this country. And Lord, we'll thank you in advance because, Lord, we know this too will pass. And Lord, we pray that this would be a good refining fire and we would come to know ourselves better and to trust you more through all of this that we might be more like 
Christ Jesus. And Lord, for those that, that do struggle, some more so than others in the area of anxiety and fear, Lord, I pray that you would give them a peace. I pray that this would be a time of enormous growth, Lord, in faith and in trust for them especially. And Lord, for those that just have a good spirit about them and that are just optimistic and their faith perhaps has grown uh, to a degree further, we thank you for those folks. We thank you for the encouragement they provide and Lord, the, the blessings that they are uh, to those that might not quite be there yet. Lord, we do pray your blessings on the remainder of our service tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we're going to hear from Miss Amber. was instructing her little boy about how to behave in church and so she asked him an important question she said do you know why we're supposed to be quiet in church and the little guy said I sure do mom and she said great why said, because people are sleeping so <laughs> that that is that's proven true sometimes even even around here all right more than anything in the world I want to be a blessing to you I, it, it's the burden of my heart to be a blessing and encouragement to you. So we're going to focus on something that I think is important, that maybe in all the craziness, maybe you haven't thought about that much. Maybe you have thought about it. Maybe you've thought about it a lot. I'm talking about being light in dark days. That's the title of the message, being light in dark days. And we're going through something that none of us have seen our country go through before. And I suppose you could describe it as dark days. Nobody would choose to, to experience what we're experiencing. So in that sense, I guess you could call it dark days. But the neat thing is, as Christians, we don't have to succumb to, to fear of the dark. We need to, in fact, realize and understand that there may be actually opportunities around us. Opportunities that we need to be aware of and not to be distracted from. In fact, from our perspective as Christians, dark days may present us with some of the best opportunities that we've ever seen in our lives. Opportunities to let our light shine opportunities to see people saved, opportunities that are unique to us as Christians. Scripture is very clear, and if you think about it, going through dark days, when the Scripture describes us as being light, that's something we need to embrace. When 
the world is going through dark days, God's admonition that we be light isn't put on hold. Maybe that's the time to let our light so shine before men as never before, as I think you'll see very clearly. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, beginning in verse number 13. You've heard this preached from this pulpit. Ye are the salt of the earth, talking about us Christians. Right now, we are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It's henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Well, I don't want us at Myo Baptist Church and other Bible-believing churches, I don't think that we are cast out. I don't think we've lost our savor. I think there are a lot of so-called Christian churches that have. But those that believe the Bible, believe in God, believe in Jesus, the resurrected Savior, believe in the gospel. No, we haven't lost our Savior. And the Lord would describe us in verse number 14 as the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but under a candlestick, or but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Think about that. That's what we are called to do. In this dark time, you and I are to give light unto all that are in the house, those that we come into contact with. And so he says in verse number 16, <clears throat> Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We're to be light. And when is light needed the most? When is light appreciated the most? When things go dark. At any of our homes, if there's a stormy night and the electricity goes out and we're plunged in the darkness, what's the first thing we do? We start looking for a source for light. Whether it's a flashlight, whether it's a lantern, old style lantern with oil or new style lantern with batteries, or a headlamp or whatever, a candle, doesn't it become really important whenever we're plunged in the darkness to have that light? And the Lord says, we are to be the light. And the darker the times are around us, it only stands to reason. The more impo it's more important that we see ourselves not as victims with everybody else in despair, but as bearers of light. What, what does that mean when, when the Lord says we're to be the light of the world? Well, I, I read this interesting, simple description, and I, I think the guy hits it right. I'll share it with you. <clears throat> he says, think of the believer's light this way. When Jesus walked the earth, he was the light of the world. He was like the sun. He was the source of all spiritual light. But just as the sun goes down and is followed by the rising moon, which reflects the light of the sun, so too believers are now to reflect the light of the sun, S-O-N. His light shines on us and in us, and we shine forth His light to a spiritually dark world. Jesus is saying that those who possess spiritual light are to be light transmitters. And they see that light, as it says there, that they may see your good works. Our good works are the light in dark times. Our good works could be making face masks, getting groceries for someone that can't get them for themselves. It can be a positive spirit. It can be a demonstration of faith. They need to see our good works. And one writer says, as believers, we're to let our actions speak louder than our words. Our gospel life should open doors, here it is, of opportunity for our lips to speak the gospel. We must speak the gospel with our lives so that it will validate the gospel we speak with our lips. Never before, in my life, have we gone, you know, 9-11 was pretty dark, but that, you know, righted itself. And it, it, but nothing has affected our generation like, like this has. What better time for our light to shine? What more important time 
You know, if I had a little table out in front of the church here and traffic passes by, if I were to light a candle out there in the middle of the day, I don't think anybody would notice it. But if I had a candle out there in the middle of the night, people are passing by, I think they would notice it. In other words, light becomes really important and necessary in dark days. And I believe that the Lord has allowed the darkness of this virus to overshadow us in part that we Christians might be refined, a refining fire, that we might come forth as gold. And you're going to do that. We're going to do that. We're going to come forth as gold. But also he allows this in part for us to affect the loss. He affects us through the refining fire. We affect them by letting our light shine. I don't believe that's illustrated any better in Scripture than Paul and Silas. Let's let Paul and Silas be inspiration for us today. That was recorded in Scripture about 2,000 years ago for a reason, and it's been preserved for times like these. You know, Paul and Silas were preachers, they were missionaries, and they go into this city, and there's this demon-possessed girl. She's being used by these unscrupulous men, kind of like a fortune teller. And they're making money off of, off of this girl. Well, Paul, through God's grace and goodness, healed her. Well, that was good for the girl, but it wasn't good for the men that were making money off of this girl, using her as, say, a fortune teller. And they were hot. They were upset. This, this guy come into town and he creates this stir. And so they bring accusations against Paul and Silas and they whoop the town up into this frenzy, which introduced Paul and Silas into some very dark days. When you think about it, they were attacked for doing good. You'd have thought they'd have been hailed as heroes. It was mirac Not only was it good, it was miraculous. But men are so evil, they attacked them. People were angry with them. They, they were flogged, it says. They were beaten with many stripes. I mean, think about that. These people were unmerciless towards them. Can you imagine how that would sting? Can you imagine how that would ache? Can you imagine how that would hurt? Not only as it was happening, but later on as it's healing. And then they were placed not only in prison, but in an inner prison. You got to remember, they didn't have electricity back then. It had to have been dark and dank down in that prison and smelly. And, and not, not only that, they were, they were put in stocks. Their, their feet were, were, were somehow held firmly. Were they sitting down? Were they laying down? Could they turn over? It wouldn't take but about five minutes of that and me thinking, this hurts. I can't stand up. I can't roll over. I can't think about it for doing good. I would believe, too, that it was probably cold down there. And I can only imagine, you know, food what would they be given? I mean, can you imagine being hungry? Can you imagine being thirsty? You can't get comfortable. I'll just throw this out there. What about the bathroom? How do you, how do, you do that? You know, we probably don't want to know. And on top of that, that was, those were the least of their worries. Because they don't know if they're going to be beheaded. They don't know. I mean, I think we could all agree that they were in dark days. And that's not kept from us in the Scripture. This is revealed to us as we Christians, while we are so blessed, we still live in a sin-cursed world. And bad things can happen to good people. And we see that, and the Lord's telling us that. Now it's our turn. It was Paul and Silas's turn then. It's our turn. We're not in prison, but, you know, 
we haven't, you know, they had uncomfortable living conditions. We have uncomfortable living conditions. They had an uncertain future. We have an uncertain future. I really believe it's going to end okay. I think God's going to take care of us. I think we're going to come through this. I really believe that. But it's, it's yet to happen. But when you think about Paul and Silas, how did they handle it? Because that story was recorded and has been preserved for a reason. God told, tells us how they handled those dark days. Paul and Silas can show us four things that can help you and I see the opportunities in these dark days. Because for Christians, the command to let our light so shine before men is not just for when things are going good, but for when things are not going good. In fact, maybe especially because there's a lot of people out there and they're out of their comfort zone and they thought that they were invincible and they thought that, you know, they didn't need God. Think about how lost people might be thinking today. And the Lord allowed these dark days, perhaps so that our light could shine. And in the story I'm about to read to you, from, you know, I'm not going to read the whole story in Acts chapter 16, but the part I'm going to share with you, we're going to learn four things. Paul and Silas are going to show us when to let our light shine, where to let our light shine, how to let our light shine, and why to let our light shine. Stick with me. We're going to be through this quickly. Here's the portion of the story that I want you to hear. They're in prison. Their feet are in stocks. They're in the inner prison. Got to be cold, smelly, wretched, can't turn over, can't get comfortable. Muscles are starting to ache. And in verse number 25 of Acts chapter 16. And at midnight, Paul and Silas, some of you probably just said it, prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bonds were loosed. The shackles came off. And the keeper of the prison, awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. Might as well have killed himself, because if had they escaped, he would have been killed. But Paul cried with a loud voice saying, Do thyself no harm, for we're all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. He brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? How do you think he knew to ask that question? Don't you think that Paul and Silas perhaps had witnessed to him, had had taken advantage of the opportunity in their dark days. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Have there ever been more beautiful words offered? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Man, that's a ray of sunshine coming into that, that prisoner, that keeper of the prison's life right there. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord to all that were in his house, his family. They're witnessing to his family. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. They're still hurting. He said, here, let me clean that. And was baptized, he and all his house straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. God brought Paul and Silas into a dark situation. And Paul and Silas did not forget that they were supposed to be salt and light. Their prayers and praise would have been little noticed. Think about this. In that dark dungeon, their praise and their prayer, their prayer and their singing was praise. So I'll say pray and prayer and praise 
had somebody passed by Paul and Silas and they'd been by a creek with a picnic basket praying and singing and, and everybody else is going about their business, nobody would have, it, it would have had a little effect on anybody else. But it's in the darkness where obviously people were taking note of the fact that Paul and Silas were still praying and praising God. Prayer and praise had an, an emphatic uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I had it had an emphatic effect on this 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 prison keeper. So let, let's look. Let's look at these four things real quick. When, where, how, and why should we find these opportunities? Well, Paul and Silas show us when to let our light shine. Very simple answer. Anytime. They were in prison. So in good times, yes, we're to let our light shine. In bad times, we're to let our light shine. And it just might be that troubled times or difficult days or dark days might be the best times. So let's not get distracted. Yes, we have to take care of ourselves. We have to take care of our family. But let's not lose sight of the fact that the Great Commission is still in effect very much. And with the effect that it's having on lost people, this might be uh, times of a great harvest. The Lord mentioned the fields are white in the harvest. That just might be the case. So when are we to let our light shine? Anytime. All the time. This is not the time for us to be discouraged, depressed, filled with anxiety. We, we need to see this as a time of op opportunity. So Paul and Silas so show us when our light is to shine. They show us where the light is to shine. There's no inappropriate place. They were in prison. So it tells us wherever you are is where your light should shine. Wherever the Lord has you, whatever, wherever you have opportunities with people, whether it's on the phone, whether it's Facebook, it, it doesn't matter, FaceTime, whether you're in a friendly environment or as Paul and Silas were in a hostile environment, never let your location deter you from sharing the gospel. So Paul and Silas teach us when we're to share the gospel, anytime. Where we're to share the gospel, everywhere. And it tells us how to share the gospel or how to let our light shine. What were Paul and Silas doing? At midnight, they're praying, they're singing in a dark prison. They could have been filled with anxiety. They could have been mad at God. But they weren't. I mean, they could have been saying, God, look, we were doing what you wanted us to do and this is what we get? No, they obviously had a real maturity about them to realize that, no, this is where God wants us. And they were able to praise God. Now think about this, because they had been faithful to do the right thing. Uh, they, they, they healed this girl. They, they were about the Lord's business. That was first and foremost in their life. And for you to be able to praise God right now, you need to be faithful to do the right thing. It's right to maintain your Bible study. It's right to maintain your devotions. It's, it's right for you to be tuning in right now. They were able to praise God because they were do doing the right thing and because their conscience was clear. Their, their, their conscience was clear. Uh, you know, somebody that doesn't have a clear conscience finds it very hard to just pray and praise God. Make sure that you're doing the right thing. Make sure that your conscience is clear. That's part of the refining fire. They were suffering for righteousness sake. And they were able to offer this prayer and this praise and that is in fulfillment of what we read, that they were able to see their good works. So, one of the ways people can see your good works is your good spirit. You're maintaining uh, your, the discipline of tuning in on Sunday morning, tuning in on Wednesday night, having your own devotions. So, Paul and Silas, in their darkest hour, perhaps their darkest, they show us, when, where, 
how to let our light shine? Through just prayer, praise, clear conscience, loving the Lord. And then it shows us why. The prisoner got saved. Uh, not the prisoner. The prison keeper got saved and his whole family. And now they're ministering to Paul and Silas, feeding them, taking care of their wounds. That's why our light is to shine. So that other people who are walking in darkness may experience what you and I have experienced. Walking in the light. Walking in faith. Experiencing God's peace. Experiencing His love. So Paul and Silas were in dark days. The Lord had that story recorded and had it preserved so that you and I might gain strength and inspiration and direction from it. When should our light shine? Any time. Where should our light shine? Any place. How should our light shine? By people seeing Jesus in us. How, that's how our light shines. Then why should our light shine? So that people might be saved. Let me give you a little practical application to that. When you, I, I realize we're, we're limited our contact with people now as it should be. You should be limiting your contact with people, only essential contacts, only necessary contacts. That's what will bring this thing to a close. But what contact you do have with people perhaps over the phone, text messages, Facebook, FaceTime, when you do have those contacts with people and they share with you their anxiety and their fears, one of the things you can do to let your light shine is say, I wish you had the peace that I have right now. Or I wish you had the faith that I have right now because I find great faith and confidence in God. And that should give you an opportunity to witness to them or tell them, turn in and listen to, our, tune in, listen to, the, the, to the pastor. But again, let me share that with you again. It's, it's so simple. You're talking to somebody and they talk about, man, this is scary, this is weird, this is unusual. You can easily say, boy, I wish you knew the peace that I knew. Or that I know. And look, that, that's a springboard to share the gospel with somebody. But let, let, me, let me share this with you too. There, there's a bonus to this. When, when you realize that this can be a great time of harvest, this is an important time for our light to shine. You know, when the light goes out in my house, light, finding light, a flashlight or whatever is critical. Okay? Things have grown dark in this world around us as, as far as the lost people see. They need light. You have that light. You can share that with them. And when you realize that and you're looking for those opportunities and you're seizing those opportunities, that also helps your mind to keep from focusing on all the worrisome, wearisome things as well. So be looking for those, be looking for those opportunities. Let me share this with you in, in concluding. One writer said this, <clears throat> talking about Paul and Silas. We have here a sublime and holy scene which sin and infidelity could never furnish. What more sublime spectacle has the earth witnessed than that of scourged and incarcerated men suffering from unjust and cruel afflictions and anticipating still greater sorrows yet? with a calm mind, a pure conscience, a holy joy, pouring forth their desires and praises at midnight into the ear of God, who always hears our prayers and our praise. The darkness, the stillness, the loneliness of that midnight hour all gave sublimity or glory to the scene and teach us how invaluable is the privilege of access to the throne of mercy 
in this suffering world. Let me read that last statement again. The darkness, the stillness, the loneliness, all gave glory to the scene. It was so dark that that light piercing that darkness was a glorious moment. And it to teach us how invaluable is the privilege of access to the throne of mercy in this suffering world. We are many points of light. May we believers, we who call ourselves Myo Baptist Church, and if there's any other people from other churches watching, I, I trust it's true of your church, May we be many points of light. May we seize the opportunity before us. Light is now more valuable than, than ever before. And you can be that light. Oh, you may have moments where your worry comes forward and, you know, a bit of hesitation. I understand it. We're human. The, the apostles dealt with that. But God was growing them. God's growing you. You're going to get there. You're going to be fine. And one of the things that will help will be to look for those opportunities that Paul and Silas found. Let's pray. Dear Lord, help us to not be distracted. Help us to not forget that we have a great commission. That we are to be salt and, Lord, as I've emphasized this evening, light. And Lord, none of us have to be perfect to be light. None of the apostles were perfect. Lord, you use imperfect people. They were imperfect. Peter, Lord, could be a basket case for you at times, and you used him. Lord, Thomas doubted at times, and you used him. There was pettiness among them, Lord, that showed their immaturity, and you used them. Lord, there's not a person in my church that can't be used of you. And may they see that, may they embrace that. May we look for those opportunities, Lord. We may not have as many contacts with people for a while, but what contacts we do have. Lord, if somebody expresses their concern, may we be able to share with them the peace and the trust and the faith that we have in Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, look for and seize those opportunities. Help us, Lord, to be light, bright rays of light penetrating the darkness, Lord, of the times and the darkness of sin-filled hearts. Lord, that jailer got saved and it changed his life. He gave his best to, P to, to Paul and Silas. Lord, may we witness the wonderful change of lives through people accepting the gospel of Jesus Christ. And help us, Lord, to be those, those points of light. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we love you folks. We miss you folks. We will gather together again. We've already been talking about, you know, how to make it happen. I mean, it's going to happen. And we're already talking about it. We want to ease back into it. One of, one of the good deacons called me today with some ideas. Other people have given ideas. And all ideas are on the table. And we're going to get there. Let me remind you that Easter Sunday is next Sunday. And, uh, you know, it, it could be the best Easter ever. If you think about it, it could be the best Easter ever as far as we, our generation, knows. Let me encourage you to invite people. Uh, we'll crank it up right at 11 o'clock next Sunday morning. So uh, invite people to, to do that, to join us. Also, be in prayer for the people that are still out there working. Uh, remember my son, Matt, he, he goes to work every morning and he's thankful to have the job. But, you know, there are you know, they're, they're risk involved. There's risk involved for everybody, for that matter. But God's going to see us through and especially, especially, especially pray for the people at the tip of the spear. And that's our health care workers because they are putting themselves in contact with people that are ill and need their help and what, what dear people the, these are. We will never look at healthcare, I'll never look at healthcare workers the same again. Never ever in my life. 
well, I look at them the same again. I've always appreciated them, but uh, it's, it's gone to a whole, whole different level. And then on a lighter note, and we need our lighter notes uh, uh, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, uh, grin or groan. And identify, your, if you're watching, just put your name in there. Send it in a, as a comment so we can know that you're, you're watching. I enjoy.